I have found a Bible mistranslation related to Jesus' deity, and it's probably not what you're expecting. So, do you want to know where it is? Yes! 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 Everyone seems to know part of the story, but not the whole story. It's the one about Jesus walking on water. His friends were out in a boat, struggling against the storm. So Jesus walked towards them, and when they saw him, they thought he was a ghost. So Jesus tried to calm them down by saying, Fear not, it is I. Only that might not be what he said. Time to investigate. All right, what do we got? It seems my tiny fuzzy intern wants me to look at something. Thank you. Oh my. I received a tip that the original Greek version of this story depicted Jesus saying something different than the version we all know from our English Bibles. It was time to start digging. And then I noticed something unusual in the notes in my cultural background study Bible by Zondervan. Oh, no way. When Mark first wrote this story, he wrote it down in Greek. Two well-known scholars, John Walton and Craig Keener, claim that the Greek version depicts Jesus identifying himself as God. What? Yeah. There's a famous story in the Old Testament where God revealed his name to Moses at a burning bush. In Exodus chapter 3, God said his name is I am, as in I exist. These scholars claimed Jesus said, fear not, I am, as in I am God. How's that for shocking? If they were right, how in the world did this get missed? I decided to look at the Greek myself. Well, this is odd. I've pulled up the Greek Old Testament, Exodus chapter 3 in the Septuagint, which is the Old Testament that Mark would have been reading from. We saw in my last couple videos, Mark was quoting from that pretty regularly. So here's God's name as it appears in Exodus, and here is God's name as it appears in Mark. What do you notice? The words are switched around. But why did Mark do that? Well, now I was faced with a problem. I'm no Greek expert, so I had no way of knowing if the word order mattered. Apparently Walton and Keener thought it didn't, but I needed to know why. After all, I'm pretending to be, I mean, I'm a detective. I found two Bible translations that did depict Jesus as saying, I am, but most said, it is I. It was suspicious. I needed to call some people trained in Greek. Time to interrogate. Tell me everything you know about the translation of Mark 650. <laughs> Swear to me! <laughs> My intel told me that Greek is an imprecise language and that in this case, the word order didn't matter. I am is a valid translation of the Greek. But I still had questions. So if that's the case, then why did the majority of Bibles translate the Greek as it is I? which clearly hides the fact that Jesus claimed to be God. That seemed a little fishy. Intern, fetch me the most comprehensive scholarly analysis of Mark's gospel in the known universe. My intern did not disappoint. He dug up quite a few commentaries with some good expertise. And the king of all commentaries Word Biblical Commentary 34A by Robert Gulick. It took a lot of coffee to get through, but I made it. Robert's work is both exhaustive and exhausting to read. His analysis of the Greek had some answers, but it wasn't what I wanted to hear. Both translations were valid. I am and it is I. The Greek phrase in question meant both and a couple other variations like I am here showed up. Stalemate again. <sighs> now what? I needed something to break the tie. 
Well, Mark's definitely not stupid. He wouldn't use an ambiguous phrase like that, especially related to Jesus' deity, without some kind of clue as to what it meant. So there's got to be some context here that would tip the scales one way or the other. Wait, why is there a reference to ghosts in the Bible? In the story, Jesus' friends thought he was a ghost, but that seems like an odd thing for a Jewish person to say. It could be a clue. Intern, fetch me everything you can find on ancient ghost stories. Stat! Unseen Realm, Dead Sea Scrolls... Really? My intern struck gold. He found an exhaustive, peer-reviewed paper on ancient ghost stories from the biblical period. It was called A Ghost on the Water, Understanding an Absurdity in Mark's Gospel. He'll make a good detective someday. That paper was very enlightening. I knew that line about Jesus being a ghost was odd. Turns out it didn't make any sense at all. In all of the ancient ghost stories I read, water killed ghosts. It was their kryptonite. Most people have heard of the River Styx, or the 70s band, separating the dead from the living. It's impossible to cross. Ghosts can't walk on water. This paper suggests Jesus' friends knew he wasn't a ghost. So why would they say he was a ghost? There was something that could walk on water, though. Gods. In Greek and Roman mythology, Zeus and Orion walked on water. In the Bible, God himself was depicted as walking on water, in Job chapter 9 and Psalm 77. Both describe God walking on water while the sea raged around him. And here in Mark, Jesus was doing just that. Coincidence? Doubtful. Mark seems like a pro. It is obvious that Jesus is being depicted as a god here. He's doing things that, according to their lore and beliefs, only a god could do. A ghost couldn't walk on water, but they say it anyways. And I think I know why. Classic case of denial. They're struggling to believe what they see. Back to the translation problem. The context pointed to Jesus meaning to say, I am, but without knowing why translators chose something else, well, that would leave some lingering doubt about my conclusion. It would imply that I'm saying most Bible translators incorrectly translated Jesus' words, and that seems unlikely. I racked my brain for an answer. I didn't have another breakthrough for weeks. Finally, against my will, I returned to Robert Gulick's good but mind-numbing work. Half of it looked like some alien language. But he had the answers to my question. So was I wrong or right? Did Jesus say he was God here? Our friend Robert might have solved the puzzle here. He says, since the Greek phrase Amy ego can be translated as it is I or I am, translators looked at how Jesus' followers interpreted his words. So they heard the words I am God come out of his mouth, and then they were like, wait, no, that can't be right. He must have meant it is I. The context shows Jesus as God, but they were still struggling with doubt. So the translators chose the translation that would put you, the reader, in their shoes. Well, what's important is how the story ends, because at the end of the story, they finally say, wow, he really is the Son of God, which, as we've determined in a previous investigation, that is also a divine claim. Peter finally says, Surely, this man is the Son of God. We already figured out in a previous investigation that at this point in history, Son of God usually meant the human incarnation of God. We finally get to put another note card on the evidence wall. Two, actually, because in this passage, we have Jesus saying he's God in his own words, and we have Mark depicting Jesus as God. Success! But there was one more divine claim uttered by Jesus in this story, and it was right in front of me the whole time. This verse seems completely out of place. Next time, even Jesus' followers missed this clue.